The Battle of Thermopylae is one of the most famous battles of antiquity, for who has not heard of 300 heroic Spartan warriors bravely fighting a huge Persian army in a narrow rocky gorge, which is a kind of gateway to the lands of Greece? But how much truth is there in this fascinating story, repeated over the centuries, and how much is there in the legends that have developed over the centuries? This battle has a special place in history for several reasons. First, it is an example of boundless courage in defense of the homeland in the face of a crushing enemy invasion, which became a model for future generations. Secondly, it is an example of military ingenuity and tactics that allowed a group of people to destroy thousands of enemies. And third, it is simply a very important battle in history. This victory that opened Persia's path to the rich Greek polities and changed them for years to come. The biggest, persistently repeated error is the size of the Greek army under Leonidas. The Greek historian Herodotus, who lived in the 5th century BC, described it in great detail, calculating how many representatives of individual cities or tribes arrived at the site of the battle. According to him, it was 5,200 warriors plus the entire army of the Opuntian Locris, whose numbers were estimated by another ancient author, Pausanias, at about 6,000. The story, therefore, has nothing to do with 300. This legendary number refers only to the last third day of the battle, when the king of Sparta, confident of defeat, disbanded the allied troops, remaining with the most loyal selected Spartan hoplites. Thus, the number of warriors, in the light of this information, exceeds 300. In reality, however, Leonidas also left 700 thespians, 400 Thebans, and, according to Pausanias, 80 Mycenaeans, as well as Ilots, or Spartan slaves. The Ilots were the subjugated inhabitants of Laconia and Messenia. Their participation in the battle is disputed, but it is known that they more than once took up arms and fought alongside their masters. Returning to the question of the forces commanded by Leonidas, another question arises about the actual number of Spartans themselves who fought in the Thermopylae Gorge. The sources unanimously mention 300 warriors moving from Sparta to the Hot Gate, but was this number unchanged at the time of the final battle? Another important question is the figure of Leonidas himself and Sparta's policy toward the Persian invasion. Although decades later, the Spartans tainted themselves with a secret treaty with Persia against their erstwhile Greek allies. But what did King Leonidas want to accomplish? Did he believe that with such a small army he could hold off the huge army of Xerxes? By the way, modern historians in the majority believe that the Persians were about 200,000 people. From the words of Herodotus, we should conclude that the expedition of Leonidas was only an outpost, the vanguard of the corresponding Greek forces, and the Greek troops had the task only to hold the Persians as long as possible, giving the opportunity to better strengthen the Isthmus of Corinth. This theory may be supported by one of the quotations alleged to be the words of Leonidas on the charge that he came with too few warriors. Indeed, I have brought many if they should perish. Were there so many who would have given their lives just to gain a few days? Perhaps it is true. Perhaps the chance of stopping the Persians was believed in, as it had been ten years earlier when Darius returned home after defeating the fleet and the Battle of Marathon. The Greeks may indeed have believed in this decision, since Pausanias explicitly stated that if the Persians had not learned of the secret route by which they had outflanked the Greeks from behind, the battle would have ended in victory. Moving on, another interesting thing comes to light, namely Leonidas's famous decision to disband the rest of his troops and the heroic battle of the Spartans to the last soldier. Herodotus's account points rather to a quarrel in the Hellenic camp and the decision of individual commanders to abandon the scene of the battle. This happened when scouts reported that Persian troops were advancing along the Anapian Trail and the chances of victory vanished. Earlier sources clearly indicate Leonidas's personal decision. Researchers have debated the meaning of such a move for years, laying out their theories. We know that the formula of returning with or on the shield of Sparta's warriors is not true. For example, when Pausanias tactically retreated a year later at the Battle of Plataea, 
No one considered it a violation of the Code of Honor. So what was driving the Lacedaemonian king? There are several theories. Especially popular, and we must admit quite logical, is the proclamation of a strategic defense of the retreat of the Allies. In other words, the king, not wanting to allow an easy defeat of the scattered Greek troops, decided to stay in the ravine long enough. As the reason for this choice pointed to the uneasy character of the king, his ambition, stubbornness, and conflict. The last important element to consider is the course of the last Greco-Persian clash at Thermopylae and the role the Thebans played in it. Reading Herodotus, Xerxes launched an attack on the morning of the third morning, to which the Greeks responded with a brave fight, advancing slightly forward into the wider part of the isthmus, where they finally fell. This is a widely known and probably reliable version but not the only one. All subsequent authors whose texts have survived to this day describe quite the opposite with one voice. According to their accounts, the Greeks did not wait for the Persians, but attacked their camp at night themselves and were close enough to kill Xerxes. He managed to escape in time, however, and the Greeks were killed only after taking the lives of many barbarian warriors. Thus, the supposed holding of the Thebans at the critical moment by force is a mystery. While many Greek cities in the north surrendered to Xerxes knowing that no one would come to their aid, the Thebans had previously been suspected of sympathizing with the Persians and had been summoned to Thermopylae to test their loyalty to the Boeotian alliance of the Hellenes. So would it not be better to send them home than to abandon potential traitors at the most dangerous moment? Herodotus writes of them as hostages, but they had no problem going to the Persians with outstretched hand, pledging allegiance to them. Moreover, we know that the Thebans did go over to the side of the Persians and even fought with them at Plataea, but whether the description of their treason is accurate is difficult to say. Today, most scholars accept Herodotus's version as fact, emphasizing the meaning of the Spartan king's decision itself. Perhaps Leonidas put the Thebans in the first line of attack so that they could not escape and were forced to fight the enemy. If so, it must have been extremely difficult to surrender during the battle, and by the time the Persians accepted it, many would have died. It is difficult to judge whether Leonidas showed genius or madness here, but it is worth remembering that the king may have had some unknowable, hidden plan that he failed to carry out. Leonidas, it should be noted, was not a young, inexperienced strategist, but a mature man in his sixties, no doubt with years of combat experience, and it must be assumed that he knew what he was doing. Despite some ambiguities, the Greeks remembered the Battle of Thermopylae with pride, mythologizing its heroes and even considering them victorious as time went on. Because, as Pausanias wrote in the second century AD, the sublime deed of Leonidas surpassed, in my opinion, everything that happened then and ever before.